There are many different types of linoleum and linoleum analogous products for use in relief printmaking. This will cover just a few in my impressions of them. Speedball Speedy Carve is a very soft material that really is a joy to cut. It feels a lot like an eraser and is not an actual linoleum. It cannot yield high levels of detail because of how squishy it is, but it is suitable for simple hand printed designs. It inks up nicely, but should not go through a press because it is so pliable it cannot maintain its shape when under extreme pressure. Clear Carve is not a linoleum, but seemed like a great idea. However, I found that it doesn't work as well as imagined. It's a little too thick to easily copy a drawing placed beneath, and its transparency makes it difficult to print because any ink on the back side shows through. The slick surface does not ink up as nicely as some other materials that have a little tooth, and it is not very pleasant to carve because of its gelatin-like consistency. Richeson Easy to Cut Linoleum has a longer shelf life than most brands. I suspect it might actually be a type of vinyl, despite having the word linoleum in the name. It cuts very easily and yields nice, crisp edges. Because of its smooth backing, it sometimes skids during the printing process. However, because there isn't any hessian on the back, you can actually cut both sides of it, so long as you don't remove too much material when carving the first side. Gamuban is an interesting product in that one side is blue and the other is green. It's made of a synthetic rubber material. You can print on either side or both sides, and there doesn't seem to be a difference between the two. Running through the middle is a strip of gray, so beginners know when they've cut deep enough to print. It's a very pleasant material to carve and allows for crisp detail. It's suitable for printing by hand or on the press. However, occasionally I've come across gamibon plates that have issues holding ink evenly. I'm unsure what causes this, but sanding might help. It's also very slippery, which can make printing difficult. Battleship Gray is a traditional and very popular type of linoleum. It's a harder material, capable of crisp lines and fine detail, but, when fresh, should be flexible and easy to bend. It has hessian on the back side, which enables the printer to glue the plate to other surfaces for registration, and also gives the plate a little grip while inking. It's suitable for both hand printing and holds detail well when going through the press. It arrives with an almost imperceptible waxy coating to maintain freshness which doesn't interfere with oil-based ink, but should be sanded off before using water-based mediums. It has a slight tooth and takes ink nicely. It does dry out rather quickly though, and seems to have a shelf life of about a year or so before it becomes brittle and prone to cracking. Plate life can be extended by printing with oil-based inks. Speedball makes a linoleum that is a golden color. It's very similar to the Battleship Gray, but I've noticed it seems to be a bit crumblier when carving. Many people prefer this type of lino because it is easier to see a drawing on the lighter surface. It, too, has a hessian backing. Of the blocks I've shown here, only the golden and the battleship gray are technically linoleum, which is made of cork, wood flour, rosin, and linseed oil. It's typically glued to jute, which is the fabric backing. You will also encounter mounted and unmounted versions of lino. The mounted linoleum is designed to sit type high so it can easily be printed in conjunction with letterpress. I find its height makes it awkward to carve and difficult to print on an etching press. You can buy linoleum sold in a roll, but do not buy more than you plan to use before it ages. Keep in mind when buying linoleum that it's common for blocks to be out of square, so check the edges before carving.